What's up, y'all? So I figured I'd come on and just touch on the difference between first aid and uh, trauma life support and the first aid kits and trauma kits real quick. It's not really going to be a long video on, on this topic, but um, first aid kit, they're basically for the basic common bumps, bruises, scrapes, cuts, uh, burns, stings like from bees and stuff like that. You know, stuff that where, um, like, medical immediate attention, emergency attention is not required, you know, is but isn't, you know, where it's not, like, life-threatening. Now, trauma is life-threatening to where people need um, emergency medical attention right away versus basic first aid where you don't really need, whatchamacallit, uh, medical attention at all. So that's the difference. Like, uh, and one thing I want to touch on too is a lot of people don't realize this, but when it comes to like life threatening injuries, you know, somebody dying aside from CPR, you know, like applying a nostril tube, for example, applying a CDN, you know, or even uh, doing certain things to like gunshot wounds in the chest and the back. Really, when it comes to stuff like that, the Good Samaritan law don't apply, you know, because that's trauma, that's life-threatening, uh, you know, and you can cause death. Whereas basic first aid, that falls under, whatchamacallit, um, uh, the Good Samaritan law. You know, like if you see somebody having a heart attack, you know, do CPR. You know, you see somebody choking, do what, I forget, uh, the pelvic, I forget the new name but uh used to be called the heimlich maneuver but due to legal issues can no longer say heimlich no more and uh stuff like that you know if somebody like gets a cut gets a scrape gets a burn gets beat stung by a bee you know you can apply like cream and stuff apply a band-aid you know stuff like that and the good samaritan act uh, falls under that in all states but, like, if you're dealing with somebody, like, in a traffic accident that's severely injured, you know, industrial equipment accident, natural disaster, gunshot wound, st uh, stab victim, you know, I advise getting trained and qualified, especially if you're going to carry medical equipment, you know, that, like, advanced life support medical equipment, other than band-aids, burn cream, aspirin for headaches and stuff like that, you know, pain reliever. You know, I highly recommend getting training before you even do any of that. You know, and like I said, medical attention is required for trauma. Basic first aid, not really. Now, that's pretty much the basics for that that I wanted to touch on. Now, the reason why I wanted to do this video, <clears throat> excuse me, is because as people know, like whenever I'm working, I always carry a trauma kit on me. I used to carry it in this, which I have the TECC uh, patch or whatever it's called, uh, logo. And uh, people always ask me, oh, what is tactical emergency casualty care? What are you doing working security if you don't even know what that is? That's just my opinion. You know, and everybody seems to focus on first aid, basic first aid. It's a good a skill to have, you know, but then again, it's taught at elementary level, you know, so it's common sense, you know, versus other things. So I explain to people, you know, it's like my stuff is for life-threatening injuries more so than basic first aid. You know, and honestly, until I started working at schools, I never really carried band-aids on me. I would always carry, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, trauma supplies. But now I keep a few band-aids just because I used to work at a school and kids get scrapes, cuts, and stuff like that. You know, non-life-threatening injuries. So, with that, you know, um, everybody, uh, not everybody, but uh, where I'm working now... My boss always does an inspection, you know, every time he comes, make sure you're dressed properly. If not, go home, you know, pretty much fired, you know, make sure your weapon's loaded. 
make sure all your equipment's uh, legit, you know, everything that was issued, not issued, you know, what you're supposed to have and not. And the most important things is keeping certifications on you, you know, and that's another thing I want to touch on too, because my experience with my current employer, always doing random checks, inspections, along with a post I seen, it was written a couple years ago though, on some website, on some security website, you know, about uh, people asking like, what certifications should I, should I carry? Well, if you're certified in anything that's applicable to the security, carry everything you have on you. Right here, I have 10 certifications on me that I keep, uh, that I made as a wallet size card into a wallet size card, and it's on me every time I work. You know, because, like, say for example, I had to apply, God forbid, like a CDN. A chest decompression needle to somebody guess what I'm certified to use it okay if I had to apply uh, I can never say this word so I'm just gonna say nostril tube guess what I'm certified I can apply it you know if I had to do uh, chest SCO wounds you know ch yeah chest seal wounds chest wound seals <laughs> I always mix that up guess what I'm certified four things okay four things that I'm certified on doing that you know if I had a pack a wound you know a stab victim a gunshot victim guess what I'm certified on that you know and it's always good to carry everything you're certified with you know, if I had a Narcan somebody, even though Narcan is now under the Good Samaritan law, guess what? I'm certified with that too. You know, there's so much stuff that you carry on you. Make sure you're certified, you're qualified to carry it. You know, because everything I carry, everything that I, that I know I can do, that I'm trained to do, that I will do, you know, it all comes with, whatchamacallit, the uh, certifications, you know, and really, to me, that's like an ignorant question because anything you're certified in, you know, that's what you do, you know, that's what you carry on, you know, or carry on your person, you know, so I don't know the people, I don't, never interacted with the people that wrote that uh, post on whatever website it was that I saw a couple weeks ago. You know, but if you're going to carry stuff, then guess what? Make sure you have certifications with it and for it. You know, if you're going to carry uh, baton, pepper spray, stuff like that, then guess what? Carry your certifications, okay? That's my, my certifications for that. You know, you got to carry uh, pepper spray, you know, carry, carry your certification card on you. You know, uh, what else? You know, if you're trained, qualified, and stop the bleed, medical, whatever, CPR, you know, then start carrying everything with you, you know. And that should just be common sense, but then again, in security, there's not a lot of common sense in security guards. You know, and like, like perfect example, you know, you don't get trained and qualified on to use these in that basic first aid. You don't get trained and qualified to use these chest decompression needles in basic first aid. You know, and from the basic first aid classes I've done, you never get taught how to use uh, chest wound seals. You know, and thinking about it. And up until I did the Stop the Bleed course, which I'm also an instructor for, thanks to my instructor helping me out, my instructors helping me out. You know, and luckily I qualified for one of the requirements to become a instructor for Stop the Bleed. So that came a long way. And my wound packaging, doing basic first aid, I actually never had hands-on training for that. You know, all I was taught was, you know, for basic first aid, was just clean off the wound, 
and then put a band-aid over it or put like a wrap of gauze around it and that was it you know but i never been trained never been taught how to like package a wound you know until i get started doing more advanced stuff you know and like i say if you did basic first aid like i have and all it is is just clean off the scrape clean off the cut you know and then put a bandage over it never pack a wound you know, and until you know how, you know, and like one of these, unless if you know how to use these, you know, which that's basically what you learn in first aid, like the wrap a uh, wound, you know, wrap a burn, you know, put cream on it, put something around it, you know, or make it into like a sling, you know, that type of basic first aid stuff, stuff that don't require uh, life-threatening, uh, measures, you know, but I just figured I'd touch on that real quick, and y'all have a good day. And one thing about the Good Samaritan Law, before I forget, people don't realize that there's a thing called gross negligence, you know, failure to render aid. Say, for example, you're, uh, a so security guard, security officer, you dress like you're part of some SWAT team, some special tactical unit, and uh, somebody gets shot, number one, uh, like, as an example, you don't know how to respond, you don't know how to react. That's a uh, failure to render aid. Number two, say, for example, you're one of these tactical wannabe sw SWAT uh, security guards, and you have this huge, huge med pouch on your person, but you don't have the medical equipment to be able to stabilize a vi gunshot victim, for example guess what that alone is gross negligence failure to render aid now another example too to think of like say for example there's a, a shooting on your site near your site you uh don't know how to react under hostile environments hostile situations you know if somebody dressed like he's uh he or she is like tactic tactically trained tactically equipped with medical supplies and all that gunshot wound uh, supplies and they're scared they're nervous they don't go over to help them you know they're more concerned on getting injured or killed themselves well guess what that's failure to render aid aka gross negligence people don't understand that you know and like I said, like, if you're not trained, you're not certified, you're not qualified on, like, packaging a wound, you know, burping a chest uh, wound seal, and stuff like that, guess what? Gross negligence, you know? Like, if you have only basic first aid, for example, and you're treating a trauma injury, that's gross negligence if something goes wrong. You're not no longer protected under the good samaritan law because it requires more than basic first aid it requires more than what you're trained to do as that old saying goes never do what you're not trained to do you know that's why i always uh, tell people and like stop dressing tactical you know especially if you're not tactical you're not tactically minded you know you're not fully equipped to handle the situation Stop it, because it's going to get you in legal trouble. Especially if you're looking like you're part of a SWAT team, have a medical pouch on you, no medical equipment, you know, especially not being certified in a trauma life support, that type of skills beyond first aid. It's going to get you in a lot of trouble for gross negligence and failure to render aid, you know, and... That's one thing people don't think about because they think, oh, good Samaritan law, I can do this, I can do that. No, you can't. You know, there's a limit to what you can do. Like, if there's a heart attack, you can do CPR, whether you're certified or not. You know, if you need to use an AED, if you know how to use it, certified or not, you can do that. You know, if somebody has a cut, a bruise, it's, uh, something that needs a Band-Aid, you can do that. When it comes to trauma, life, uh, threatening injuries, no. That's what people don't understand. You know, especially if you're not certified and equipped to carry the things on you, to utilize the things on you, don't carry them. Because just carrying them alone can actually get you in trouble too. 
you know, I'm, I'm not licensed to practice medicine, but I can be able to do things because I'm trained, I'm qualified, I'm certified in tactical medicine, you know, not just first aid. And again, that's where the Good Samaritan law comes into play, you know, for the non-life-threatening issues, and that, but uh, for treating life-threatening issues, that's what we're people misconstrue things and don't realize gross negligence you know even uh, failure to render aid you know like like i gave the example like somebody gets shot in a car in my uh, spot and my post i you know i have this uh, trauma kit on me you know it has the tcc logo you know i don't do nothing to help the person and then guess what gross negligence it's another thing people got to think of too, but be more tactical minded, get tactical training. Like as an instructor, I told me, told the class before, no matter what, always be a student. No matter how old you are, no matter how much uh, into things you are, always be a student. And, uh, and I'm just gonna say this much, just because you go to a gun range all the time it's kind of off topic, but if you go to a gun range all the time and that's the only training you know, that's the only training you do, that's the only thing you can provide to the table, bring to the table, you're not being an asset to yourself, to the company, to the client, to the uh, people of the client. You know, all you're showing and demonstrating is that all you're capable of is just pulling that trigger. So then, uh, even though I said like that's obviously off topic, but there's more training out there than just shooting guns you know especially if you're gonna said go to a range every single week every single day every single month and just shoot not nah, still paper targets that's not real training that's not training at all you know and even though it's off topic but a lot of these security guards think that oh because i can i go to the range every week i go to the range every month i'm training i'm trained how are you training how are you trained when all you know is how to pull the trigger when you know how to just stand there you know and another thing i'll touch on too the gaining respect from uh, law enforcement and others even other security guards you know you're not going to get respect by going to a range every day every week every month you know because all you're showing okay just shoot a still target okay now where's the tactical training Where's the moving? Where's all the maneuvers? Where's the cover and concealment? Where's the stress under fire? You know, stuff like that you gotta think about. You know, care under fire, medical care. How are you gonna be an asset to yourself, to the client, to the company that you're working? You know, just by going to a range and shooting every day. You know, if you wanna get respect from law enforcement, from anybody in general, other security guards, other security professionals, other security specialists, Start by stop having the tactical look. Start by doing advanced training, okay? Get training in medical beyond first aid. Get training in advanced in shooting, not just sit there, pull the trigger, boom, that's it. Okay, because anybody, including a two-year-old, can pull the trigger and just sit there stand still. You know, join things like IDPA. You know, advance your skills. You know, do things like that. You know, do care under fire uh, courses. Do stress uh, courses. You know, stuff like that. But to the tactical wannabe security guards out there, there's a lot of things. And the number one thing, too, to gain respect from law enforcement especially, stop calling law enforcement for the smallest, simplest, pettiest things that there are that are, is handled at a security guard level. That could be handled at a school principal level. You know, because there's a lot of things that security guards call law enforcement for that there is no reason for law enforcement to even show up. It's called being a nuisance. You know, especially if you're going to look all tactical and stuff. You know, those kind of security guards, security officers. That's why a lot of security guards don't get respect is because of that. But even though I'm off topic, but figured I'd touch on that too. Y'all have a good one.